very much agree with just with uh, what has just been said by my colleague from Germany. Uh, I don't think there will be a comeback of coal in the U.S. Mm -hmm. because simply you can buy natural gas from shale gas now, basically at the price at which I bought it some 25 years ago. And uh, uh, we have to realize here that the, it's, uh, it's uh, available because the resource is there. It's yep. accessible because the network distribution for gas is very much developed in the U.S. Much more developed than the railroad system, which will have to carry. In fact, there's no space at this time on the railroad system to carry the coal that would support the so-called coal revolution in the mm -hmm. state. And, and thirdly, you know, energy, there's the three famous uh, WEC three A's, has to be affordable. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that the natural gas fired coal plants produce, gener do generate power at a lower price mm -hmm. than coal can, especially if you're talking about clean coal. Mm -hmm. This is obvious. So I think your president uh, uh, proposition yesterday to take coal from 30% to some 3% is what needs to be. That's the low hanging fruit, as our colle colleagues just said. And uh, it's not, I don't, it, it, the way we will present this is very important because I think humanity will use coal someday. But the fact of the matter is, in the few next decades, we simply do not have the technologies in order to do this properly. Mm. Why will we be using it? Because there's 100, 200 years reserves in China, mm. in the US, and in India. So someday, coal is going to be produced. <laughs> but the matter of fact is, it cannot be produced as much today because we don't have the technology. S same problem, in essence, as with the renewables because we don't have the technologies to produce them so that and keep them affordable for the people. We have to work on research. There has to be a lot of investment in research. Lots of it was expected to come from the U.S. industry. Now, the least I can say is that what the uh, president uh, decision will not support very much uh, the investor in new uh, technologies. And I mean, if you don't have access with your new technologies, with your investment to the US market, then, uh, well, that's very much less. That's obvious. Finally, and very shortly, just I want to make sure I, I, I represent the right situation for Canada. I'm alongside uh, my colleague here again, because uh, Canada, like Germany, uh, uh, the new government has been uh, very forceful engaging in support of the Paris Accord, but but he kept the same objective as the former government. And plus, with the actual action plan, he won't even meet, we won't even meet these low objectives. Mm -hmm. So this, it's not only about, the, the difficulties are not only about Trump's decision, the difficulties about the decision of many countries or the many country not taking mm. the decisions. Thank you. Okay. Olivier. Mm. Uh, switch off. Uh, I, I would like to come back to the Trump uh, mm. policy, Trump decision. Okay. In fact, clearly I'm convinced that uh, the, uh, this will have a minimal impact for, uh, on the energy mix and on the CO2 emission of the United States for four main reasons. Mm -hmm. The first is coal. Coal is not, as you said, coal is not competitive uh, uh, towards gas. Uh, mm -hmm. Gas reserves are, are huge. And uh, at, uh, mm -hmm. if uh, it may perhaps stop the ongoing decline mm -hmm. for a few years, but not for the long term. Mm -hmm. Second point, Trump policy will have only a minor impact on the development of renewable in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, renewable development is not really linked to federal policy. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, regulation and incentives are, dis uh, are decided and implemented at the okay. local level, yeah. states, local authorities. Mm -hmm. uh, the third point is that a significant share of CO2 emission in the US as well in uh, many countries is coming from the transport sector. Mm -hmm. And for the time being, Trump administration didn't intend to change the corporate average fuel efficiency standards, mm -hmm. which has been decided by consensus by uh, mm -hmm. Obama administration. Mm -hmm. And fourth, for mm -hmm. the last few years, we have seen a strong mobilization in the US of the industry and local uh, uh, st uh, state holders, stakeholders. Some state and municipalities, that has been said, have put in place emission trading system and major industry has shown a strong commitment on climate change. Mm. And just yesterday, I was surprised to, uh, uh, to, to, uh, by the announcement of Exxon that Exxon will spend one billion dollars per year to research on green on research on green energy. Mm. So these are four major reasons okay. in order to explain that this will not have uh, the this Trump decision will not have. Uh, a direct impact. It will have an indirect impact, but it's a diplomatic impact. And mm -hmm. while well, the, the, some countries may follow the example of the United States, I will not refer yeah. to any country, but you have the idea of some, mm -hmm. some countries. And I, I would like also to highlight the fact that Trump diplomacy may also have a dramatic impact on the short term on the energy scene. And just consider the international policy towards Venezuela, Russia, Middle East, and specifically Iran. Mm. And this is a really a short-term uh, short threat on the energy sector mm. in just the next few years. Mm. Thank you. I, I cannot agree more about uh, what you mentioned about these elements of the, uh, the, 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 the impact of Trump's decision on the uh, clean energy uh, development. But Mr. Lee, do you have some comments? Yes, uh, with regard to Mr. Fluke's points, I think uh, you have a point, your point, but I think your point is uh, rather regarding the basic problems of Paris Agreement itself. Mm -hmm. It's not something to do with uh, Donald Trump's uh, decision to mm -hmm. withdraw. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there is, a, there is a many studies uh, and I can understand his skepticism because uh, many studies show that the agreement would actually have a relatively small impact on the climate change at a tremendous cost. Mm -hmm. That I think uh, is true. So uh, that is one thing. But what I want to say is that despite the many withdraw uh, drawbacks of the agreement, I wonder whether we have any other alternative. This the consensus emerged in a very difficult manner by more than 186 mm -hmm. years, in which North Korea also takes part in. North Korea ratifies the Paris Agreement much earlier than South Korea. Hmm. So I wonder whether there is any alternative. Mm -hmm. and the Paris Agreement is not perfect. There is no dispute settlement mechanism. Mm -hmm. Therefore, there is no way to enforce yeah. the commitment. Mm -hmm. There are many things to be made from now until the end of the uh, next year, but it is not certain they can emerge, the consensus. Mm. So, however, the our fight against climate change is must. It's not an option. Mm -hmm. In that point, I think uh, the G20 leaders' declaration is symbolically meaningful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Masada-san. I'd like to write on one of big trend or tide of time uh, moving in the world. In that sense, I don't think any any expression of intention of government will not have big impacts as it used to be. For example, there is a 
big breakthrough energy collision by 28 billionaires in the world, which declared in November 2015, just on the eve of Paris Agreement. And many investment is taking place thanks to those private money. And there are many other coalitions of this type, and uh, like C40, the big 40 cities captured in the world are tying hands, and this number increased nearly to 100 already. And also, universities are aligned with each other, and many companies are working together, and uh, many alliances in transport, transport sectors or uh, renewable sectors. So I think we should be carried away too much with uh, the activity of one or single government like United States or single political leaders like Trump. The time and tide is moving much faster than political leaders may think. And already the big ship has departed from the point of uh, departure. And from this point of view, I honestly I'm not very much worried about whatever things Mr. Trump might say, mm -hmm. despite all these agreement. That's my feeling. Okay. Thank you. Do, yes, I think uh, this last you have some words to say. I, I want just to make one comment, uh, coming back on the uh, low-hanging fruit, because I think we have to be very pragmatic. And we see here, from the discussion we have on the Trump administration, that at the end of the day, even though the U.S. made that decision, and I agree that it may have some impact, a negative impact, but the reality is that market forces the price of gas just made that uh, today the U.S. is probably the best in class or uh, the second best in class in terms of uh, CO2 uh, mm -hmm. emissions because of yeah. the switch. Yeah. And so it's not because of a political decision, mm -hmm. it's because of market yeah. activity. And, market, mm -hmm. and I think that's very important mm -hmm. that regulations actually should make market work in the right way. Mm -hmm. You took the very good example of uh, Great Britain, where with a price of 18 pounds per ton of CO2, the switch between coal and gas for power generation took place almost immediately in the country mm -hmm. with very significant benefits in terms of CO2 emissions. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that for all the countries where you have the, the chance of having some coal-powered uh, power plants and gas-powered power plants, you just don't need to make any investment, but just by increasing the, the price of CO2 in case it, it would not naturally be the case as it is in the US, but to a low level, you can switch because you dispatch gas-powered power, power plants rather than coal-powered power plants, just for economic reasons. Mm -hmm. And so I think we need to follow up on this low-hanging fruit uh, policy, let's say, to try first, and not necessarily to have a global price of CO2 worldwide. No, that's not going to happen. But to have local price or between several countries in order, on a regional basis, with interconnections between different areas, mm -hmm. but to do that in order to be efficient. And that's really a pragmatic approach I, I think we should follow. Yeah, that's a very good point. Friedberg, 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 can you do that in Germany to make certain carbon price to reduce the cold to something else? Because you have, you, as you have said, I mean, Germany is burning 50% of, of the power from coal, right? How, how do you reduce coal in Germany? Yeah, it's, it's a little bit less than, than 50, but, but almost. Uh, but, uh, you, you know, we have in the moment the negotiations of a new, for a new government in Germany. So the Green Party, of course, says, get out of coal. Uh, let's put a, a final a, a date for the last coal power plant as we have done the phasing out with nuclear. Uh, the other two parties, Christian Democrats and Free Democrats, are against it. But the main reason is the strength uh, of the coal lobby, including the trade unions in sparrow mm -hmm. areas. Yeah. So in 
uh, areas like Saxony or North Rhine-Westphalia, uh, there is a long tradition of coal. Uh, trade unions are strong. Uh, so it is, nobody really says we love coal or want to continue, <laughs> but it is a fight of yeah. interests. Yeah. And therefore, I believe we will not do, we will not come very far. And the question of having some sort of national carbon price, we all know the ETS system uh, hasn't led very far. Uh, the ETS price for, for carbon is so low that it's not an incentive to switch from coal to gas. But, uh, but then there is a discussion of introducing, like in Britain, uh, a coal, a national coal tax or whatever. Uh, but uh, again here, uh, I think it will not happen uh, in the in the in the coalition uh, uh, contract. So uh, I'm I'm very sorry to say that I think we will continue with enormous uh, built up of wind and solar, uh, but uh, we will also stick with coal. Uh, <laughs> this this is interesting. Yes, yes. Andre. Yeah, well, perhaps a little bit less. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To, to make a specific this is uh, suggestion. Yes. Now, uh, wind power and solar power mm -hmm. are recognized as renewables. In the case of hydro, it's not so clear. It depends on the country. It depends very much on the country. Some places it is, some places it's not. But the matter of the fact is that um, in many instances, wind and solar are simply not affordable. So it's very nice to say, but it won't happen because the people will decide by themselves. It's the decision that's going to be made locally. I will suggest that uh, an approach be made especially to the UN, because it's the UN that uh, was against large hydro. So that hydro, a low-hanging fruit, uh, is, may, is fully recognized as a uh, renewable. Mm. It's, maybe it had not been in the past, and I don't want to reopen this, these discussions. Uh, but Having the facts before, before us when it comes to climate change, I think there's an urgency here and that we need a re already available renewable. That is hydro. That is hydro in many parts of the world, in Africa, in South America, and in Asia. So why don't we make all those international organization change their mind a little bit and say at least for a while the time it will take us to make wind and solar affordable let's go to let's allow for hydro development in africa one site inga would simply double the amount of power available at a reasonable price in africa double multiplied by two. Yeah, Andre, I, I can fully agree. I mean, Canada has a lot of potential hydro also, but uh, if you say so, I'm very happy to, I'm, to add nuclear as a clean and sustainable <laughs> power. <laughs> Korea, Japan, France yeah. are representing nuclear, and that is very important that the global, I mean, World Bank, etc., must finance. Chairman, the discussion That's exactly the point. I support you. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you very because much. Because I don't know why we, with low, <laughs> yes. carbon low yeah. sources, we take away. Well, that's, you, you, not, that's not going, that's I not reasonable at all. I fully agree. But, well, we should not uh, discuss this too much. But uh, this is, uh, the coal is, is, is a very important issue, though we understand the German difficulty, but other part of the world, maybe uh, France or Canada, US, because of the market, the coal use is going to decline. Yeah. That is that's what you said. Yes, it's, uh, if you're looking at uh, the last few years' figures, you will find coal uh, uh, power generation is declining, although coal 
production yeah. is increasing simply uh, uh, because it's more exported. Yeah, I want to ask Masuda-san because Japan is planning to build still the coal power plant uh, in addition to the current level. Yes. Um, Jap Japan is heading towards the opposite direction with many from many countries. Currently, if my memory is correct, there are 44 either planned or under construction coal fire power plants in Japan. And the two reasons. Because of stoppage of nuclear power plants, only just several of them are returned to life, and, st and still 48% of population in Japan is against restarting of uh, nuclear power plants. That, that's reason number one. Number two, utility market. Electricity market is in the middle of, re of liberalization, and by, by fiscal year 2020, unbundling will be completed. That means utility companies lose com competitive power. For that purpose, cost cutting is a priority, uh, despite uh, more increased CO2 emissions. So this is a big issue, but even the Japanese government, very determined to green our economy, cannot stop the desire of uh, utility companies to survive in very competitive market. And we have to do something about that. My idea is probably burying coal under the ground completely is not realistic because actual desire even in Japan to use coal. The point is how we can use coal more cleaner way. Clean coal technology is not really clean because that will emit less CO2, less NOx, but it's not completely free from CO2. So maybe the next agenda is why don't we turn to CCS and CCUS? Total mm. and is leading those technologies and I'm really supporting of those technologies. And realistic approach is we have to use all energies available to make it affordable and accessible to everybody. And uh, geopathizing or demonizing coal is not a wise way of managing this huge global economy which absolutely need energy. So I think we have to invest more uh, on technology to use even hydrocarbons in an environmental friendly way and uh, coal should be the target for us to, to approach to that direction. That is, use coal with less CO2 emission and ultimately leading to global application of CCS and CCUS technology. That is my scenario. Thank it, you. It's Germ Germany is using CCS or CCUS? No. Uh, we, we had uh, two pilot projects, but then uh, uh, opposition came about. Uh, well, the same sort of opposition that we had against nuclear same sort of opposition that we had against nuclear mm. uh, fears of the population. Uh, so, so the German government uh, decided not to pursue this course. Oh. But I happen to agree completely to Tatsuo. Um, uh, this, because in many countries in the world, let's take India, Colombia. Uh, Kosovo, with the largest lignite uh, reserves uh, in Europe, M many other countries around the world. Well, Kosovo is a, is a wrong example because it's a tiny country, but even the, the big players, China, <coughs> will need coal until deep into the century. And uh, if we know that this is a reality, we can preach and say renewables, renewables, renewables. It is much better, in my point of view, uh, to put some of the enormous subsidies that we put into uh, solar and wind uh, into CCS and CCU. And mm. I think uh, this is a real key mm -hmm. to turn around uh, the, the climate policies if we can make a business case out of that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And that, of course, again means we need higher CO2 prices because if we have higher CO2 prices, suddenly CCS and CCU 
will make sense. Vladislav. Well, I, I can only fully agree with uh, what you, you just mentioned. Uh, it is clear that under the two degree scenario of IEA, there is no way we can achieve this scenario without CCS. So it's not a question of whether we like it or not. It's a question of if we want to get there, we have to find ways to make CCS or CCUS with the use of CO2 work. And I fully agree that uh, uh, if you don't have any carbon price, it's very difficult to make a business case. <coughs> and if you just use subsidies, which for a start is needed, after you need private money, because private money is just, you know, you need business cases, because you're not going to develop full CCS over time without private money. You, you, you need to have a business case being a, a company like ours is dedicating 10% of R&D on, on, on carbon capture. Mm. So that's a, that's a huge effort mm. which is, uh, which is uh, being done. And I think this is absolutely key in the process. Now, there is a thorny question, a difficult question that uh, you raised on what should we, well, what should CCS apply to? And there is a question here because there is limited storage ability for CCS. And in that regard, probably, in our view, it's better to dedicate CCS to gas power plants mm -hmm. because even though they emit less CO2, but yeah. on an energetic basis, oh, yes. it is more efficient yeah, yeah. actually to concentrate mm -hmm. the CCS mm -hmm. effort on, on gas fire power plants mm -hmm. rather than on coal fire power mm -hmm. plants. So it's, in my view, an additional benefit of following the gas chain and mm -hmm. advocating for gas as a transition fuel because, unfortunately, the ability to, to, to store uh, CO2 will be limited at yeah. some point in the future. Yeah. I, I, I know that the Norwegian government has set a six, more than $60 per ton carbon tax, and that's the reason why Stat Oil is do, doing CCS in a slate now field. Stat Oil and Total and Shell. Okay. <laughs> so if the government set that kind of, uh, you know, determination of the pricing, it's CCS is always possible. So the German government, if they decide to set $60 per ton carbon tax, it's always possible. But it, it's more political decisions they don't like to do. But maybe I may add up just one comment on that. It's that costs go down when you pay attention and you work on it. And sometimes I, I hear criticism saying, oh no, CCS can only work if you have $100 per ton. But we have to start. And, and we'll make progress and we'll reduce cost and we'll be more efficient, okay. but it needs to be started somewhere and it may be more and more efficient as actually the activity sure. when the oil price dropped from $120 to 60, I can tell you that the industry has adapted. Mm -hmm. It will be about the same in our view for CCS, but we need to start from somewhere. So you don't necessarily need to have a very mm -hmm. high okay. price of CO2. And Olivier, um, and then, then leave. Um, I've been involved uh, quite a long time at the EU level on CCS, and I would like just to make two comments. Unfortunately, in Europe, except some companies such as Total, we have lost the momentum of CCS, mm -hmm. and now the leaders are uh, in the US and in China. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, in Europe, will be again Me Too. Mm -hmm. Second comment, uh, uh, in fact, uh, UK is very fortunate because they are isolated for Europe, for Europe from Europe. And uh, in fact, they are able, before, even before the Brexit, they are able to set up their own policy. Mm. Their own policy, it's a carbon tax, mm -hmm. but it, also, it is also the relaunch of nuclear energy with a, a specific uh, contract, contract for, for difference, mm -hmm. uh, development of renewable, uh, the huge uh, investment of gas. Unfortunately, I'm afraid that uh, in Europe, except UK, it will be very, very difficult mm. to cope with this uh, challenge, mostly 
if uh, there is no agreement in Germany, and I think uh -huh. that if there is no agreement on Germany, uh, on, for, on the German government, uh, on uh, uh, CO2 tax or CO2 price, I don't know, then we will wait for years to have a price signal, a significant price signal in, uh, in Europe. Interesting. And perhaps I, uh, it, it, would be inter it would be useful also to have a focus on coal, but... Uh, okay. Well, that's, that's very interesting. It's not Trump, but German government who is stopping this exercise. Lee San. I have a question towards this, uh, get, uh, the energy expert. Uh, you're talking about the inevitable inevitability of the coal use, but uh, according to the IEA, mm -hmm. the coal power generation takes up 41% of entire world power generation, being the largest contributor to climate change. How we can address the climate change if we do not deal with this issue, the carbon first? That is the I think uh, the first uh, question I would like to uh, be to be enlightened by the expert. And mm -hmm. secondly, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, uh, Korea's new administration policy with regard to energy. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, Mr. Fluger, if you came to this year's Knowledge Forum, you would have uh, different <laughs> views from Korea. Uh -huh. The new uh, Korean government uh, that took office this May is making very bold energy approach, mm -hmm. energy policy approach. Okay, that was because I was there last year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And uh, it's very different from the previous government. Mm -hmm. uh, this administration decision uh, has decided to halt construction of new coal power generators. Mm -hmm. And they will decide to only shut down the old coal power generators at the end of their design lives. Mm. These measures will definitely contribute to uh, international joint efforts to respond to climate change. Mm -hmm. So we are now going away with the coal power generations. Mm. And uh, the third point I'd like to make is uh, you know, the, in the G20 uh, leaders meeting, the the, the issue, very important issue on climate change is how to phase out inefficient fossil fuel subsidy mm -hmm. yeah. while safeguarding the need for mm -hmm. the poorest yeah. over the medium term. I think, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Danaka, you have dealt that yes. issue True. in IEA. Correct. Though the leaders agreed to phase out inefficient mm -hmm. fossil fuel subsidy in 2009, mm -hmm. they cannot make any step forward from that declaration. Mm -hmm. No way. And uh, even the US uh, under the Obama uh, administration proposed that let's make it clear what is the uh, medium term. And medium term need to be 2025. Even that pro uh, proposal was rejected by India, Brazil, Russia, and Turkey. So, but now the experts say the uh, fossil fuel subsidy, they need to be subsidized. So how we can, uh, I think, uh, scale with the uh, uh, leader's declaration to phase out inefficient fossil fuel subsidy. The, lastly, with regard to Andres' point on hydro, I was an ambassador to the Philippines. Our support, I think, uh, not only the Korea, but also Japanese support to the Philippine governments to construct hydro mm -hmm. face a very strong opposition mm -hmm. from the locals. Mm -hmm. They raise the questions on environment. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult to go forward with hydro in uh, some developing countries. Mm -hmm. Thank sure. you. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Just coming back to the CCS, many people here may believe it's very costly to catch, capture CO2. But technology is developing very quickly, and today uh, the lowest cost of capture is $40 yeah. per ton. This is achieved by a British company called Clean Carbon Solution, uh, run by Anilda Sharma, my friend. And also in Japan, Kyoto University is working on special membrane with porous, nanoscale porous, 
which could capture CO2 one-tenth of current cost. But it takes another four to five years. They have to first uh, build a pilot plant, but this is already on the horizon. And this kind of competition is ongoing everywhere. And their target is to make CCS and CCU profitable commercially. And in today's world of competition for better technology, those changes will take occur much sooner rather than later. So my dream, and it won't be dream any longer in 10 years from now, CCS and CCU could be commercially viable options. And if you think about CCS in big coal-fired power plants, it's a daunting task. But, but if you think about CCS with steel mill or cement mill or chemical plant in a smaller scale, then you can achieve with all this pile of innovation, the cost will come down and the competition will feel mm. more pressing than cost. So we should believe in economic mechanism, competitive mechanism towards better solution. And yes. also, lastly, mm. one point about hydro. Mm. Hydro is charming, but as Ambassador said, the environmental downside is too big. And also land sand fill in the dam, water dam, is a daunting task as well. So I don't see much prospect for hydro and better not promote hydro because of environmental implication, both in developed and developing countries. Thank you.